Test, test, test. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yep, I can hear you. No, I'm can good. You hear us? Hello. Hello. Good morning. Hi, this is Dan Kahn, uh, Chris Anchek. And so uh, we're going to wait our another three minutes as normal, and then uh, I'll kick off the meeting. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, kick off the meeting. Uh, folks should have the slides open for February 6th. I just pasted them into the window. And uh, Taylor, could you please share your screen uh, so that folks can see the slides if they, um, if they want to? I'm just gonna make one request here at the beginning of our call, which is 
uh, well, first of all, just a reminder that everything CNCF related operates under a code of conduct. Uh, but just more generally, I, I won't be shocked if, if some conversation here gets a little heated. Um, I, I would request up front that everybody just interact in a respectful and, and I'll emphasize collegial way. Um, and I, I will say that one of the advantages of CNCF is that we're only two years old. And so uh, a lot of our structure and organization and such was put together as a best guess as to what would work well, but absolutely none of it is set in stone. Everything about CNCF can be changed essentially with either six votes out of the nine of the TOC or uh, for a, a smaller subset of things, a majority of the governing board. Um, so with that, I will um, hand it over uh, to Alexis if um, you don't mind leading the meeting today. Um, hello, Dan. I certainly don't mind leading the meeting today. Um, I'm just trying to figure out why I've got a, this on my screen, hold on a sec. Okay, do you mind if we jump to the first slide, which actually has something non-generic on it? Right. Um, do we want to do a roll call? I think we can do it offline. So let's go to the project status uh, theme. Okay, so yeah, welcome to Rokers and Inception Level Project. Uh, let's move to the next slide. And the test incubation, next slide. Uh, do we want to say a few words about this slide, Dan? I think we've talked about it a lot, but it's becoming customary to talk about it every time. Uh, well, it is, and we do have this um, election coming up uh, quite shortly. So uh, Brian Grant and Solomon Hikes uh, need to decide if they want to um, essentially nominate themselves to uh, run again. And then um, on March 17th, uh, the TOC will meet privately and the other seven members will decide whether to uh, reelect those two or to pick uh, new ones. And then once the nine member TOC is reconstituted, uh, those nine will select its chairperson and Alexis needs to decide if he wants to run again for it. So um, that's coming up uh, in a month and a half. Um, and then things are stable until uh, the end of January of 2019, when uh, the other six members are going to be uh, selected by the governing board uh, or reappointed. And uh, Sam Lambert will either be reappointed or replaced by the end user community. This is uh, Brian. Do, I do plan to run again, but do we have an official nomination process or voting process? But uh, we definitely don't, um, Brian. The um, TUC gets to choose how to do it. The, the governing board, there's a whole like very detailed process on, on that's written out in the charter. But um, CNCF staff is very happy to run an election for you. We would just do it via CIV, um, which is how we do all of our elections, and, and people use the rank Condorcet uh, voting. Uh, but I, I actually wasn't here for the previous time. Maybe Alexis can say how uh, you guys picked Alex, how you picked Brian and Solomon. Um, I actually, I'm being honest when I say I can't quite remember. <laughs> Sorry, Chris can remind us when he's he's here. From from what I recall, there were there were uh, emails with bios sent, and you know the elections. Uh, I did talk to the TOC one time, and then there were elections. I didn't participate in that, obviously, but uh, there there was at least, I think, like a, a roster of candidates or something. Um, I don't I don't know if we need uh, an excessive number of candidates for this election, but uh, it'd probably be useful to decide for this and for future elections. Well, I, I think the key thing, Brian, is is I'm not sure that Solomon is going to um, renominate himself to run again. And so if, if he doesn't, then um, I, I presume the TOC would like folks to put their names forward. But just to be clear, the, I mean, uh, you, you, the TOC could also ask people to put the, their names forward. Is it up to this? Sorry, this is Justin. Is it up to the TOC to decide who nominates people or can the community nominate people as well? 
T, uh, TOC really needs to create the process. Right? So let me have an offline conversation with the TOC and propose it. I mean, basically, I would just propose that anybody can nominate themselves and the TOC can request people to nominate themselves. Um, just on the TOC mailing list or something like that? Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah, that seems and, and fine. Then, yeah, and then when we, when we get there, we, we would do the condorcet voting um, of everyone. And, and obviously, it's only the the seven members would do the would uh, be eligible to vote. Right. Okay. Thanks. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So I think that was worthwhile. So I, I will take that as an action. Right. Okay. Just trying to get this thing open again. So what's the next slide done? Project status. So this is something we discussed last time and. Uh, those of you who pay close attention to such things will have noticed that uh, it continues to be a, a live issue for the community. And I thought it would be very helpful for us to spend some real time on this call discussing the matter in, at hand, which is that um, in a nutshell, uh, several people, and I'm not necessarily not one of them, feel that you know inception is being seen as a stronger blessing on projects than perhaps the TOC had intended when we first came up with a category. Um, so much so that you know, companies appear to be uh, betting their future on becoming inception projects and the associated um, you know, reception from customers and the community and from um, VCs and so forth is consistent with that, that people are getting money, that you know they're being promoted as the, the choice for Kubernetes for, for for purpose X and and other things which were not really intended, and I think that we need to um, essentially look very carefully at whether Inception is a valid category. I think it probably is, but I think we need to make its lower status much much clearer than than we got as far as saying last last time. So um, this is what I want to discuss today, and uh, already. I think on the um, public list, Camille suggested, for example, that we adopt some of the methodology of Apache with their incubation status for these very young projects. Uh, I think also we need to um, come up with some much clearer guidelines for the marketing team in terms of what the TOC feel is the status of an inception project. Um, so that, you know, it's not promoted. And I think, you know, getting a press release, and uh, some, and what goes into that press release are very important considerations. You know, we don't want people to think that somebody, can you please stop typing or go on mute, whoever that is. Um, if there is a press release, you know, that should message the correct status of the project and it should describe the project very carefully. Otherwise, we have a uh, danger of, of overhype and the subsequent uh, costs of that, which have already been felt by many people. Uh, and there's been actually quite a lot of upset, which is not great. So um, I'm not quite sure exactly. Yeah, let's actually go to the next slide, please, Dan. Let's go to the, so this, is, this is what we have on the website right now. It states that inception projects are a lower tier, but that's the only thing we've done so far. If we go to the next slide, you know, as you can see here, this is, these are the topics for today. Um, so my first question for the TOC is, if we start graduating projects, um, do we still need inception? Because at that point, incubation will be clearly demarcated from inception as a sort of starting point for certain types of projects that already have reasonably significant numbers of users and um, you know, GitHub stars or whatever you care about following. Does anyone have any strong thoughts on this that we should uh, listen to first? Well, this is Brian. Um, I think Inception does, could potentially fill a valuable place, which for, for these early stage projects that do want a neutral uh, home for collaboration amongst many, companies, the incubation bar requires production usage. And as we've seen in some other cases, um, you know, projects at the very early stage, my, I may either choose another foundation or 
you know, even worse, they may not actually get uh, enough traction. I mean, if they are track getting a lot of uh, participation, maybe that's a suggestion that a foundation is not essential for them. But, uh, you know, for areas that are important to uh, cloud native, uh, cloud native operations, cloud native technologies, I think it would be a shame if we couldn't take on those projects uh, just because they were early stage. I'm definitely inception or sandbox or whatever needs a lot of improvement. Uh, as I was looking around this morning, we don't even have a statement anywhere that I can find about why we do inception projects and looking at a number of the press releases around some of our recent new uh, inception projects. Uh, the press hasn't picked up on the reason either, mostly. Uh, there were a couple of exceptions like GeekWire actually figured it out. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we, we need to make that distinction much, much clearer uh, and make maybe more drastic changes to the, the marketing so that they're not just put on the same level at Cloud NativeCon and whatever uh, as all the other projects. Right. So, so just, sorry, Camille, go for it. Uh, so here's, here's what I was going to say. I, I, I feel like there are like a number of conflicting forces at play. And uh, obviously, I was in the room when we decided to make Inception and put Linkerd in it. Um, but right now, it feels like one of the reasons that people want Inception is it appears to be, and, and Brian or one of you who works for one of these companies can correct me if I'm wrong, that you know there are companies like maybe like a Google and Microsoft or IBM or whatever that don't feel comfortable having developers working on open source projects in a collaborative fashion that aren't in some kind of foundation. That, that, that is an impression that I've gotten. Um, the concern that I have, so, so if that is a legitimate thing that's happening, I would like for us to be able to, you know, enable those kind of cross collaborations, because I think a lot of valuable work from those companies is coming, you know, is coming into the open source world. And obviously, we want to continue to encourage that. The concern I have a little bit, though, is that we have created a little bit of a beast where we we don't where where we have kind of this um, this arms race to get into CNCF as early as possible because otherwise you are kind of competing, frankly, with um, projects that are either being done by these big, you know, a thousand pound gorilla companies that are in CNCF partly because they actually need that foundation protection to collaborate at all. Um, and, you know, and it sort of starts to seem like everything legit is coming out of us, even at these like very, very, you know, uh, small stages. And it, it is, it does make me worried, right? It makes me worried. It makes me understand why people want to get in as early as possible. But I think a lot of the things that we've, you know, had up for vote to join Inception are like sketches of an idea, it feels like, and maybe not quite like a real thing yet. Um, not, you know, I think Core DNS and Linkerd and Rook, frankly, are all good projects and I voted for them and, you know, but, but I, this is my concern is that we've created an impossible situation for ourselves because we kind of need this to help, you know, to help a very, a very important group. Um, but by helping that group, we, we kind of bless that group at the same time and we make everyone else have to do that also. I, I agree with what you just said. And I think like, um, I mean, now that I work for a big company, it's different, but also like I saw the world from the like, you know, the big people are trying to crush us kind of way. And uh, that is like a legitimate concern, I believe for startups and stuff. But I think that right now what's happening is it's being gamed. Like people are like gaming the system so that they can get in and then get the like vettedness of the CNCF, you know? So I'm not I'm not sure how we you know, I, I'm not sure how we have a have a have an area unless we are really very much like there is no, you know, there is no sponsorship, there is no advocacy, there is no press releases, 
this is a, you know, this is kind of a, a place where we want to let people safely collaborate and therefore we have this kind of sandbox inception place, but that's all you get from it is kind of this safe, you know, whatever trademark cover, I don't know, you know, lawyer, lawyer safe area for companies to collaborate and that's it. Like, I, I'm not sure we can do much better. I'm not sure that if we, we continue to do more than that, we're going to get a good, good outcome from this. Yeah, <clears throat> I actually li like the idea of uh, turning the marketing of these projects down to zero. Um, I think in addition to just providing a neutral home, we could potentially do some of the other things that we have talked about doing to help open source projects like um, provide example governance models and things like that uh, for some of the projects that need them. Uh, but uh, in terms of marketing, yeah, I would definitely be in favor of just dialing that back to zero to remove that as a motivation. Yeah, guys. I if, I could, if I could offer a comment. Um, so this is Bob Wise with Amazon. Um, yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> so I think that would be a great thing to do. I mean, I had suggested on the email list, you know, a turn in the other direction, which is to make the bar for inception higher, but going with the theme of the moment, at least. Um, if the, I think part of the issue is that the TOC votes on it, um, it and that is going to be an inert, and that's done in public, and that's going to be an endorsement that people take very seriously. And uh, to, to the degree that the inception level is just like a safe harbor for anyone, any and all projects, the marketing problem will take care of itself because lots and lots and lots of projects will join kind of like they do in Apache. Thanks. So I think what I just heard someone suggest is that it might be better to lower the bar than raise the bar and then call it, make it a lot clearer that it is a sandbox. You don't get marketing, but you do get service desk help. Yeah, I'm in agreement with that. I think that what everything that uh, has been discussed is, is great, actually. And I, I think that's, that's probably the right thing to do. As Quinton here, I had one, one other thought. So, so clearly the plan for inception projects is that they should graduate to incubation and eventually graduation. Um, and one of the, I guess, underlying concerns is that we get projects getting into inception just so they can get their seed funding and then basically don't fulfill the ultimate goals of the CNCF. And so what we could think about doing, and I'm sure this might be contentious, but, but allow some amount of marketing. I mean, there is some achievement in getting in to be an inception project, but then equally, uh, if things get uh, kicked out of inception after some reasonable period of time not having reached incubation, um, we could also make that public. To well, make it clear that, that inception projects are early, but, but on a trajectory towards graduation eventually. And as soon as we decide they're not on that trajectory, we remove them from inception. Right. Well, we definitely I should just, re remove just them. Just hold on a second. Sorry, go ahead. Just very quickly, just wanted to respond to, to Quentin. Um, we do already have the concept of pruning projects, even from incubation, although that is more extreme. And I, it's been made, the point's been made that had we already done so, perhaps some of the misunderstanding around the inception tier would be less. But I do believe that we should, we should be more proactive in that pruning projects, maybe do so more frequently and make it a lot clearer when that's happening. So I agree. So please continue. Oh, I think I just, you, I, I just think we're not very good at saying no. <laughs> we're not we're not very good at pushing things out. Like, and I don't think that's that's a, that's a bad thing about this group. I think it's just human nature. It's it's hard to, um, you know, it, it's it's hard to reject a thing that isn't completely abandoned. So. I I am not I don't have a ton of faith that we would that we would frankly that frankly it would even be like the thing we would want to spend most of our time on worrying about pruning projects out like I I'm actually much more in favor of letting a lot more stuff in and saying look 
we're just gonna let a lot more stuff in and we're gonna make it much less of a voting process much less of a public to do you want to put some stuff in a sandbox and you know whatever then great go for it um you know we'll provide some some a bit of support but perhaps not that much support i actually think that's a better i think that's a better path forward for us than um than pretending like we're going to do a thing which i just think is unlikely for us to do based on everything i know about the way people act which is that we would kick a lot of projects out so would it be a cncf sponsored sandbox what would be the difference between that and i just go get something on github i mean i i guess i just want to yeah. understand the boundary my, my understanding is there are legal there are legal things and i don't know if brian grant or someone else can speak to that but my understanding is there are legal reasons that bigger companies would prefer to have it in a neutral third party. Yes. That is correct. And I can appreciate that fully. So I get that. I just wanted to know what, you know, if we were going to lower the marketing, which I think is a great idea. Um, you know, what, what will be the boundaries? So it's well defined for those new projects. They understand what they're getting into as well. Another thing I think we can do and that we would need to do if we lowered the bar, uh, is actually do for projects that want to graduate to incubation uh, to do the full diligence cycle as if it were a project from outside uh, at that point, as opposed to doing it when it became an inception level project. Um, That's a good idea. What was so, the idea? Can you type it into the chat box? So one, uh, this is John Delmeck from Core DNS. So as a, as a maintainer of an inception level project, I mean, one thing about broadening that there are, it's not just marketing that, that, that the CNCF provides. So like one of the things we, we use pretty extensively is we have access to the packet.io um, for that's where we run our CI and things like that. And that's all funded by the CNCF. And how would those sort of resources be shared? And maybe that's more a question for Dan, but if we were to expand inception to a large number of projects, it seems like um, that might be prohibitive. Uh, I don't know where the, the funding is. It, levels are uh, hi uh, good question and um just by the way it, it's actually packet is contributing those resources so we're not we're not paying for them um so we're we're very appreciative of that and and that program actually right now which we call the community infrastructure lab is available to any open source project that goes and requests it via um it, it's on our homepage under community community infrastructure lab and so um as of right now um, there's plenty of server resources available for dozens of new projects to come in and use it. The idea has always been that we would prioritize the graduated and then the incubating and then projects and then, um, but, but as of right now, there's no scarcity. Uh, but I, I, the other piece I'll just add is, I, I think what we're talking about or possibly talking about is explicit, is saying that all CNCF services would be available to the sandbox layer, um, but not the marketing ones. And um, we, we would really need to be more specific about that. I mean, we, I, I presume we would wanna have a sandbox page on the web page, which would not be on the homepage, um, where we would list those those logos and, and describe the projects and such. And um, then we would need to talk about whether we would be giving those uh, companies the chance, uh, like Kubernetes SIGs right now, can have a session at KubeCon whether uh, those sandbox projects can. Uh, all those pieces would need to would, would need to shake out. Right. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So for we uh, for those of who may not be aware, uh, we've had a thread related to this uh, with respect to Kubernetes that we have a lot of projects cropping up that um, would have. Uh, are of potential use to Kubernetes and contributors want a neutral home for those projects, but it's kind of unmanageable to host them under the Kubernetes project itself because they have uh, potentially different sets of contributors and uh, different ways in which the project actually uh, wants to operate and, and things like that. Uh, and that amount of heterogeneity is uh, difficult to manage, especially on GitHub um, which doesn't have great tools for managing uh, lots of GitHub organizations and repositories. Um, so we've been discussing this idea of maybe if there were CNCF sandbox, that could be a place that such projects could uh, kind of start and grow uh, 
and experiment and innovate uh, without requiring uh, oversight directly from uh, the Kubernetes uh, steering committee and maintainers. Yeah. So I think that would be done by the same function here. We would just have a general CNCF sandbox, which would also cover Kubernetes early stage. Yes, Brian. So, oh, sorry. One other question I, I would have for the TOC on this is: Do you want to have uh, a, a require the same six out of nine votes to get into uh, the sandbox? We uh, wouldn't have. A I think we would have three sponsors or something like that, and then we wouldn't need to have a vote. Right. That, that's exactly what it. So you could do one spot. Yeah, three sponsors. Uh, would be a, a, a lower bar. Well, do I have any sponsors at all? I mean, it, it goes back to TOC endorsement is really, really valuable in the market. Um, as, as long as the CNCF staff have done some basic diligence on, you know, is it a real project? Um, I, you know, I, I think that's, that's better, but it's still sort of falling into the same endorsement trap that we're trying to avoid at the moment. Well, if you want thousands of projects, Bob, we can have them if you have no bar at all. Well, I think part of the endorsement concern does come for, from things like CNCF press releases and interviews when the project is inducted. Um, the uh, putting, putting the projects on stage at KubeCon, you know, I, I think if we just cut that down and, and just say, look, um, they're not on cncf.io. We have a GitHub page somewhere that links all the orgs for all the sandbox projects. Um, we have a lighter weight process and a lower bar for projects to get in. There's some amount of vetting to make sure it sort of fits with the right direction, but they have to, you know, if they want to become go actual go into incubation, they have to go through the re regular proposal and diligence process. Um, I think that seems Worth, worth a try. Um, I don't know that who, how else the vetting would work until uh, the, the TOC contributor uh, process, for example, is still very nascent. And I don't know if we have enough uh, participation or shared understanding yet of what we're doing there to fully delegate that to um, people who haven't been identified. Uh, I would be really hesitant to, 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 to say no, that everyone's allowed in. I mean, there's 77 million repos on, on GitHub. And right. in reality, it, it does take staff time just uh, to, to respond to service desk requests and just simple, small things. And so a, an alternative proposal to three sponsors on the TUC would be one sponsor on the TUC. And, and I, let me make even more specific proposal, which would be that if you want to be a sandbox project, you need to find one TUC contributor to um, sponsor you and one TUC member. And the uh, TUC contributor would be expected to actually provide some meaningful ongoing uh, oversight and, and supervision and suggestions. Yeah, I think there's, there's a very important aspect here that we mustn't overlook, which is the branding side of it. And that kind of goes both ways. So whether we call these sandbox or inception projects, they're still in some way associated with CNCF. Um, and the CNCF has a brand to, to kind of uphold. And so we do, yeah, we, we absolutely need to have some bar. Uh, otherwise that brand will, you know, over time become worthless, uh, which is, it is not at the moment. Um, yeah. Uh, how does Apache do it? I, I think uh, Camille or someone sent out a link that was quite helpful. There's a lot of Apache Inception projects. Sorry, I'm, I forgot I was muted. Um, I don't remember the details. Um, exactly, but it's all, you know, it's Apache, so it's all extremely transparent <laughs> and uh, uh, so can... is saying that Apache requires a champion and Luis is saying that Fedora requires a single sponsor yeah so there you go yeah but 
that would seem like a decent pattern then. Yeah. So uh, on a, um, from an implementation point of view, if we're going to drop all marketing, um, I think it might be wise for us to first uh, list exactly what we define as marketing. Um, because there could be some things in there which are just, just sort of essential to the functioning of making sure that people are aware of the activities we're doing with these projects that other people in the TOC may see as marketing. So um, I don't have that list off the top of my head, but I think it would be wise to put it together and then have that discussed at some point rather than just saying as a blanket decision when I'm going to do any marketing. Okay, so I think I want to thank everybody for their contributions today. Um, Dan, would you mind finding somebody in your team to take the notes in the chat window and turn them into a, a Google Doc or, or something on GitHub in the form of a proposal for a sandbox tier to replace Inception? Uh, yeah, that sounds fine. So uh, I'll take responsibility for that proposal along with uh, Chris when he gets off out of the air and um, we'll definitely have um, you know some brackets or um, areas to discuss but I, I think from here we can take it to a Google Doc and the mailing list and uh, check in again at our next meeting. Thank you. So there's another topic on this slide which we haven't covered I want to cover today which is the concept of more mature or stable or slower moving projects. Um, this came up at, in Austin um, during the TOC meeting there was a discussion about projects like um, etcd, which are separate projects which uh, are used within Kubernetes and other larger projects, and are not, not necessarily evolving new features very quickly, nor are being treated as kind of projects, sorry, products on their own um, trajectory to kind of long-term standalone success. Uh, please, can you go back from this slide? Thank you. Back to the, yeah, this one, thank you. Project Turing, thanks. And, um, you know, I think that uh, this is a good idea that um, we could label projects as being slower moving. Uh, Camille, I think you were potentially willing to, I don't know, uh, act as a sponsor for this idea as well. Uh, there, is, there is a sketch of how it might work below the fold in the slides. I think it's essentially just a label on a project, but I'm not sure if that's the right thing. What are people's thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, I I think that there are going to be projects, and I think etcd was the was the uh, impetus for this discussion, that are essential pieces of infrastructure for major cloud native systems that are just not maybe going to be, should not be expected to be feature churning machines. Um, that you know, for whatever reason, they are at a point of stability or they are just sensitive enough that they don't change that quickly. And, you know, they don't necessarily have a humongous group of um, active contributors, but we want to provide them a stable home and support. And I think, you know, I don't think this should be a, a totally common thing for us to have, but I would, you know, I would hate to orphan critical pieces of infrastructure because you know, they don't meet, um, you know, they're, they're kind of atypical in their need for, need to move slowly or, you know, their kind of criticality in the stack. I'm not sure etcd is the best example here because their, their development is, is actually relatively active, even though um, it's not necessarily adding tons of new features. Um, I forget why exactly we 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 got to that. The, the, obviously, I wasn't looking at it when uh, when we had the discussion. Um, Brian and I were discussing it, um, so maybe he remembers some more details. It, there, I, I feel like it was partially partially some of the concern was just the the relative uh, few committers there are on the project. Yeah, I th we have language in the. Uh, principles document about what kinds of projects we're looking for in terms of high velocity, growing, et cetera. And uh, etcd didn't seem to match the spirit of 
of that, at least yeah. like in terms of a, a do user adoption, just, just as one example, I don't know that it needs to necessarily be a goal to get uh, zillions of more uh, dir direct users of etcd since it is a critical component to uh, to kubernetes and to other uh, current sets of users and yeah the the small number of uh, maintainers was a concern although um, we, we are trying to uh, address that of course but you know it doesn't need to necessarily grow the dozens or hundreds of contributors in the same way that uh, Kubernetes has tried to do. Uh, you need high quality uh, contributors who actually deeply understand distributed systems. Um, so it does feel like it's, it is kind of a different point in the spectrum in terms of uh, what the project's needs are and its uh, trajectory in terms of where it needs to go. Uh, obviously, we're open to revising any of the, the guidelines, but I, I, I'm not, it seems like this is already taken into account when the TUC um, evaluates a, a project that, that SED being the exact example of something that nobody wants to have uh, tons of features added to and, and presumably container D as well. There's, there'd be some aspiration that it will reach stability and then slow down dramatically and that new development would, would take place at, at other layers. Okay, so I'm actually going to suggest that we stop the discussion for today on this, um, let people go away and think about it, um, or we'll renew it another day, Dan, um, if you could ask Chris to make sure that that, that happens. Um, let's move on to the other topics for the day, so we can wrap fairly quickly. Um, this is just a reminder on Project Health. Uh, Chris and I are trying to gather some TOC contributors to help us do uh, Project Health checks and other reviews uh, please email Chris and me if you want to be one of those people. This is important, I believe. So far, Mark has done and, and a couple of other people. Let's go on to the next slide. So um, Brian suggested that we update the cloud native definition, which um, everybody thought was a good idea. Uh, Brian, do you want to talk us through this and what you think we should do next? Yeah, uh, so so the, re the motivation for uh, starting this was came out of uh, discussions from the storage working group about what is cloud native storage and reading the proposed definitions. 90% uh, of it sounded like what is cloud native and they were trying to define that. And I went back to look at the definition in the charter and it seemed very Kubernetes specific. It talked about containers, dynamic scheduling and microservices, uh, which seemed particularly helpful for evaluating uh, other projects, uh, especially if we want to do things like lower the bar for uh, inception, we're still going to need sort of a rubric for deciding what cloud native, you know, whether a project fits with the cloud native mission or not. Um, the diligence guidelines that we came up with didn't really uh, cover this in depth either. So, uh, I have what's shown here are the points from the second draft there. There's a third draft now. Um, but uh, thanks to uh, Justin uh, Garrison for uh, helping to propose uh, most of these points, but trying to come up with attributes for that would be engineered into a system in order for it to sort of qualify as cloud native. Coming out of the discussion, they're also um, points about, well, maybe we still need some examples, like we can use containers and microservices as, as examples of things that would be considered cloud native or other uh, sorts of approaches like declarative APIs or um, uh, other specific technologies would be useful to help clarify. It's hard to get a uh, really clear, uh, accurate, precise definition that's also concise. So. I think we're going to have to uh, balance it a little bit with uh, ha having a definition that is concise, but maybe not fully fully explained, and then defer the explanation to uh, to elsewhere. The charter actually has a short 
section at the top labeled the mission uh, and then a longer section as sort of an appendix called Schedule A where it discusses um, cloud native, different parts of a cloud native uh, ecosystem in uh, somewhat more detail and that part also needs to be updated. I haven't started to work on that. But that is would be another place where we could put some of these additional details or we could just remove that entirely and create a, an entirely new document which contains our up-to-date understanding of uh, what key uh, technologies or, or functionality in that ecosystem would be and how they fit with cloud native. Uh, so as far as where to go next with this, uh, there is a document um, which I can paste into the chat uh, in just a second. And there is an email thread, so either comment on the document or reply in the email thread. And we'll try to come to agreement on uh, something concise and then maybe we can start working on the longer form uh, with additional details. Uh, there, I might, it's my understanding that there are a number of charter updates potentially that we may want to make. So this would be sort of bundled with those in, in a revised version of the charter for vote by the GB at some point in, in the hopefully not tremendously distant future. Hey, Brian, uh, um, I, this is all, I'm, I'm very supportive of it and, and we're ready to immediately change the CNCF marketing in terms of you know, what's on the home page in our slide decks and such. But uh, all things being equal, uh, I, I would, I, I think, encourage the TOC to make a recommendation to the GB to just eliminate Appendix A. Uh, I, I mean, the context here is that a, a very small group of people wrote that appendix in mid-2015 when they were trying to kick this off, when Cloud Native didn't have a clear understanding. And, you know, things were just way, way bigger than they were uh, today. And, and so I, I'm just not sure that we want to have a complicated bureaucratic process for um, amending that in the future. It, it seems like it might be easier to just eliminate it from the charter and then the TUC can have a document which, you know, maybe you try and update once a year or something where it, it lays out what, what you currently believe uh, Cloud Native represents. Uh, I like that idea. Yeah, me too. So Dan, are there any other changes coming out of the operating principles that need to be uh, updated in the charts just while we're on that topic? I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I actually wasn't aware of, of other meaningful changes to the uh, charter going forward. Okay. Oh, well, um, and so the election uh, details were clarified. The, I still think that the language in the charter is fairly confusing. Um, I don't know if we want to bother updating that or also just remove that to a separate document or leave it as is. Um, I, would, I would have to read the charter again to point out specific things that could be changed, but it is, I don't know, maybe the documents of a historical interest, but it's like as a whole, I find the document so, somewhat confusing. So I, I do as well, Brian, and, and I, I want to make the claim that I did not write the charter and um, have no allegiance to it. But uh, it, the election was a specific example where trying to pull all the information from the charter um, to to create that election document was tedious and confusing. But I believe creating those specific dates and the schedule and everything is completely consistent with the charter. And that by getting both the TOC and the governing board to sign off on it, to agree that this was the path forward, it, it's not actually necessary to revise the charter. And, and so my, my fear is that undertaking that is just a, a meaningful effort and it's, it's not going to produce useful results at the end of it. So, so, so I, I have maybe, a, maybe what we should look at doing is um, putting useful content that we want people to understand places other than the charter and just make the charter less prominent. Exactly. We that, mentioned that the be, charter in every yeah. single press release. So, yeah. and, and, and that's an easy, I mean, that we can just change that going forward. And, and so we already have the TUC principles document, which we went through this process on. So we can start highlighting that and then whatever we call this new doc of the cloud native definition or cloud native principles, something like that. Great. So that's a great strategy. We can take bits out of the charter, 
replace them with better stuff in, in chunks over time. And uh, this will be the next piece. So in terms of next steps on this uh, document, uh, knowing that Brian often volunteers for things while being very busy, would it be possible for a TOC contributor, perhaps someone like Justin, who's been down this path before, to volunteer to own or co-own the delivery of a document? I would love to have Justin's help if he's willing to do it. I just really don't want this document to be designed by committee. That is my, my concern with this is that it is starting, it's starting down the path of design by committee where, where it, uh, you know, that my, I, I, I will be opinionated on this one because I think, I, I think, you know, we were, we were, we were inching down that path um, a little bit and I understand that these things can be hard to pin down and, you know, uh, making, making a precise point is, you know, is sort of making a statement, putting ourselves out there. But I, I hope we can, I hope we can keep this to be something that is actionable as a, you know, when I put on my end user hat, um, I actually have found the original definition, maybe Kubernetes specific, incredibly, incredibly useful. And one of the best definitions of like from an application layer, what cloud native kind of needs to look like. Um, and we aren't evaluating projects that are application layer projects always, right? We're evaluating a lot of infrastructure, which is why it doesn't always fit perfectly for us. But um, I just, I do, I do hope we can, we can, you know, uh, not, not make everything good about software engineering uh, credited to cloud native <laughs> in our, in our definition. So yeah, I will, is, be, I will be, no. it will be involved whether you want me or not, I suppose. <laughs> this is uh, Justin. I'd, I'd love to be involved with obviously, you know, driving some of that definition. Um, I'm also very scared that it would be designed by committee. Uh, so I'm, I've been trying to, you know, at least have some, don't try to go into it and, and assume that we have no opinions, uh, but to know that you know the definition is going to be opinionated one way, and myself being a strictly an end user and not having any projects or you know actual like money on the line in any CNCF project, I think uh, helps me kind of take a step back and look at those things. But also coming to at it more of a I I help manage infrastructure more than manage applications, so I do have a little bias there as well. So, um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to be involved. I mean, as far as design by committee, I'm happy to just iterate on it with uh, a small group like Camille and Justin. Um, and certainly I'm not gonna include anything in the definition that I don't actually agree captures the, uh, the essence and the intent of cloud native. Um, right. I think that's a plan. Um, so if, if anyone else has a really, really burning desire to be part of that small group, um, please say so to the small group um, offline. But we'll proceed with that. And Dan, could you ask Chris to table a recall of the group for say a month's time when they've had a chance to form an opinion? Certainly. And um, Taylor, can you put your slides back up, please? We just lost them on the screen share. And I will just say, if we do get more volunteers, I would prefer someone who's actually willing to contribute text as opposed to just willing, willing to review and offer opinions about the text. That's yeah, a good point. I do think that to Camille's point about being actionable, um, it would be lovely to see something where in addition to a set of properties of cloud native as illities, there was a statement along the lines of typically these are achieved by, you know, containers, microservices, or something like that. Because I think I will, yeah, I will help write, Brian. No, I wasn't referring. So. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just letting you know. I will help write. <laughs> but and yes, I we got a number of uh, good suggestions and ideas from the mailing list, but um, it's not going to converge unless we actually get people with those ideas actually uh, working on the text, suggesting alternate text. So, yeah. But your point is uh, taken, Alexis. I agree with that. Right. I've actually got to leave the call to get ready for a podcast. And um, I think we've kind of wrapped, almost run out of time. 
So I'd like to just shelve the rest of the agenda unless anyone has any reasons to not do that that are really pressing. Okay, good. Thank you everybody for talking about Inception without having a fight. That was great. <laughs> and um, see you next time. See you next Great. Time. Bye. Thank you. Cheers.